Hello tipsers and tricksters, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another Vintage Tips and Tricks video. If you are new to my channel, my name is Bee. I'm a vintage glamour enthusiast and musician. I make vintage beauty and style videos with a little bit of sustainability, veganism and lifestyle thrown in for good measure. So if that sounds like your jam, don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notification bell so you know when my videos come out. Today's video is another one in this series on vintage. I have a whole series on how to find true vintage here that I will link up above that you guys can check out but that looked at each decade so it was what women wore in each decade from the 30s 40s and 50s and I will be following up with the 60s one soon but something that I haven't touched on that one of my lovely patrons asked for off the top of my head I've forgotten who but I will pop up above who suggested it but I haven't really touched on jewelry and I kind of noticed that really no one in the vintage community has touched on it that I've come across. There may be some fantastic videos out there that of course I've not seen, but it's not something that's kind of prevalent when you search for vintage fashion on YouTube. And so I thought it was about time we discussed it because I think accessories, especially if you're new to vintage style, can really make or break a vintage look. So if you want to keep it simple with some modern kind of classic pieces, some high-waisted pieces, a simple white shirt, and you have your hair and makeup done, if you just pop on the right jewellery, you can really make a modern vintage look look like a really authentic look, if of course that's what you're going for. So I thought I would touch on today the different types of jewellery that were popular in the mid-20th century in the different decades that you can keep an eye out for when you are vintage hunting. So without further ado, let's get into it. What have you got? to costume jewelry to Bakelite and everything in between, the mid 20th century was all about jewelry as a fashion statement as opposed to an indicator of wealth which it had very much been before. The materials that were used in costume jewelry of the 20th century came about before the turn of the century but it was the fashion designers of the era that really brought fashion jewellery to the plate, who brought it into the game and made it available to the average person to wear jewellery as a representation of who they were, what kind of fun, playful look or, you know, even artistic or serious or classy, whatever it was, it was an opportunity for the day-to-day -day person to pick up the trends of the time and also change with the times as well. So as fashion changed, so could their jewellery, as opposed to investing in a couple of really beautiful but expensive pieces that they might just wear day in and day out because they didn't have the money to change it each season. So instead of making jewellery with gold and silver and real gemstones, there were some new inventions on the market, including crystals. Of course, Swarovski is a major player, but there were many other jewelers at the time who came up with really inventive ways of making costume jewelry look as sparkly and beautiful as the real deal. But before we get any further into the video, I want to say a big thank you to today's sponsor, which is aptly Anna Luisa Sustainable Jewelry. I really love this company's ethos and attention to detail when it comes to creating sustainable jewellery. Their pieces are timeless, many of them have a vintage flair to them, and they are designed with all sizes, gender expressions and styles in mind. They not only care about the people who make their jewellery, but they also care about the planet. And I was delighted to hear that they use recycled materials wherever possible, their gemstones are transparently sourced, and they are 100% water and carbon neutral. They also release their pieces in small batches and use recycled and reusable packaging. Tick, tick, tick. Anna Luisa has sent me a really lovely selection of earrings that I felt were kind of akin to what Gina Lola Brigida and Sophia Loren would have worn in the 1950s and 60s. I have some images of some of my favorite vintage divas wearing similar styles here. So I picked some gorgeous hoop style earrings. There's also like an oval hoop shape that I have seen on Elizabeth Taylor that I had to snap up. And these kind of twisted rope ones as well that I thought were really, really pretty. These styles are really versatile and they're good quality so that I can wear them day to day and know that they're not going to tarnish or fall apart, which is great because I put my jewelry through the ringer. I'm continually spraying it with hairspray and I wear them to work and stuff. As you know, you know, I dress vintage day to day. So I want to know that my jewelry is going to 
handle the task. And the good news is for those of us who are sensitive to metals that they do test their pieces rigorously to ensure that they are nickel free and hypoallergenic. When I was looking through their website, I came across a phrase that I thought was really lovely and that was making conscious luxury accessible to everyone. Of course, reproduction jewelry is really, really fun, but it is nice to be able to reach for some quality staples and know that they are ethically and sustainably sourced. So if you are interested in picking up some beautiful sustainable jewelry of your own, I have of course linked the Ana Luisa website down below. Do check it out. And as usual, I have a special deal for you guys. So if you use my code MISSB10 at checkout, you will get 10% off of your purchase. Thank you so much to Ana Luisa for sponsoring this video and supporting my channel. Let's get back to talking about vintage jewelry. So I think we should start by talking about some of the key items that came into the production of costume jewelry in the 20th century. And those are diamantes, crystal gemstones, and Bakelite. In 1724, George Frederick Strauss invented a leaded glass that was then polished so that it sparkled like a diamond and diamantes were born. And over a century later came Swarovski who used this invention with the addition of colored foils at the back to create crystal gemstones that are still extremely popular today. And not many years later came Leo Bakerland who invented a new hard plastic in 1907 that was extremely versatile, could be molded into many different shapes and poured in many different colors and has become extremely collectible we know it as Bakelite. But despite all of these wonderful inventions that made costume jewelry possible, it wasn't until the 1920s when a certain designer named Coco Chanel changed the concept of how people wore jewelry from something that indicated their wealth and status to something that could be worn as a fun fashion statement or a sense of artistic expression. It wasn't long after Coco Chanel came onto the scene with her fashionable jewellery that the likes of Schiaparelli, Eisenberg, Hobe, Trafari and Dior also followed suit. So some key pieces from the mid 20th century that you're going to find on eBay, on Etsy, in vintage stores that you might want to keep an eye out for are matching Diamante earring necklace and bracelet sets, wooden bangles, Bakelite pieces and Bakelite can be shoe clips, dress clips, earrings, rings, necklaces, bangles, hair pieces, it even came in Tupperware and stuff as well, guys. So Bakelite was really super versatile. From the 30s, there was things like glass and wooden bead necklaces as well. You also have like encrusted cuffs, metal plated cuffs as well with like a gold metal plating with lots and lots of different diamantes through it. And of course, in homage to Marilyn Monroe in Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, the rhinestone tiara. But costume jewelry wasn't just for people who wanted to pretend to be wealthy or invented because they looked like the real thing. Even the big stars of the time were seen on the red carpet wearing rhinestones, despite the line in the movie, I don't mean rhinestones, diamonds are a girl's best friend. People like Marilyn Monroe were seen on the red carpet wearing pieces by Trafari, Dior, Coro, etc. because these were really high fashion pieces and these were the big fashion labels and fashion designers of the time who were coming out with costume jewelry pieces. So despite the name, they were actually very high fashion pieces. I personally am a sucker for 1950s style jewelry. As you can see, like I collect pieces even in reproduction versions that look like the bad girl hoops of the 1950s. That's my real go to. Uh, I like cuffs and chain bracelets and things like charm bracelets. Charm bracelets were huge right from the 1920s through the 1970s and they're quite easy to come across particularly on eBay. Clip-on earrings made of crystals in clusters or ear climbers. Beautiful brooches. I love a good brooch and earring matching set or a brooch that goes with your necklace or that goes with your entire set. I'm really into that kind of stuff. I do also like like 1930s wooden necklaces and stuff. I'm not such a big Bakelite lover. You'll find me occasionally with one or two bracelets on but I tend to be more of a charm bracelet or a cuff kind of gal but you guys you don't have to stick to one thing as I always say there is no right way to wear vintage and there was such a huge array of jewelry during the 20th century that you can really select a million different styles and stuff that is still incredibly popular and can be found today not just in vintage versions but is still being made today that harks back to the mid 20th century and the birth of costume jewelry so do your research, check out things that you like and find something that really speaks to you and have a play around. Like you can muck around with different centuries, different styles, homage to different uh, designers. 
go for it, have fun. And if you're interested in how to spot vintage jewelry pieces that you should be investing in, because just because it's costume jewelry doesn't mean it's not a collector's item. So Bakelite, uh, particular designer pieces by the likes of Coco Chanel or Dior or Swarovski are very, very collectible. And I'm going to be doing an exclusive Patreon only video on that topic this month. So if you want to check that out, that will be linked down below. So that is the video guys. I hope you liked it. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe and comment down below. Let me know what you thought of the video and any suggestions for future videos. Thank you so much to Ana Luisa for sponsoring this video and supporting my channel. I've of course linked the Ana Luisa website down below. Do check it out. Come and follow me on my Instagram. Check out my Patreon. It is linked down below and I will see you in the next video. Bye.